What's going on guys and welcome to the next episode of the Crack a Pack series. Today we're opening up a very special pack of Rise of Eldrazi. Uh, this is an absolutely fantastic set. Sitting at the top we of course have Big Mama herself, uh, Emrakul, along with Kozilek. Uh, Ulamog is also up there at $32. Vengevine is actually one of the cards that I would love to pull. I absolutely love Vengevine decks so I'm hoping to pull something exciting out of this pack. Uh, it, this is a really good set, so I imagine that we'll at least get something exciting. Uh, but of course we're going to do this as if it is a limited environment, so we'll do the best we can to figure out what our pack one pick one would be uh, if we were drafting this set. Uh, and we start off with a good card. So we'll jump right in. Uh, our first common here is Flame Slash. So this is a sorcery for one red, and it deals four damage to target creature for one red. To put that in perspective, we have Lava Coil uh, in standard right now that costs double this and still does 4 damage, but it has an Exile Clause, whatever, but this is absolutely efficient. Uh, it's fantastic. I absolutely love this card. Uh, fantastic removal and limited as well, so I'd really do, I really do like that. Uh, Knight of Cliffhaven, a 1 and a white for a 2-2 two -two creature. Now this features a level up. Uh, if you're a newer player, you have no clue what this is, I'm guessing, but it's actually a really cool mechanic. So you can level this creature up as long as it is on the battlefield and you can pay three mana. You only can do it as a sorcery, but if you level it up once, uh, it becomes a flying 2-3 creature instead of just a 2-2. Two -two. Now you, do, you have to level it up three more times to get it to level four or above, uh, and it becomes a 4-4 four -four flyer with vigilance. Uh, so what this ends up being is sort of a mana sink, so if you don't have an efficient turn or something like that, you don't have a play, you're able to level these creatures up and make them even more powerful. In addition, if you're just kind of all in on something, uh, these level up mechanics just kind of make it easier to build up more and more powerful creatures. Uh, the danger here obviously is you invest some mana in it and it does get removed, but this is actually a really good creature, I think. Uh, it starts off as a 2-2 two, two for 2, which is on par. Uh, you level it up once and it becomes a 2-3 flyer, which on its own is great. Uh, you don't actually need to level it up more and more, but obviously you can. If you can get into that 4-4 four, four flying vigilance range, that's amazing. So uh, I really like Knight of Cliffhaven, uh, probably more than Flame Slash, though I would love Flame Slash in draft as well. Uh, Wildheart Invoker, a 4-3 for 2-2 for two and two green. Uh, you can pay 8, which is kind of the style with all these invoker cards. Uh, target creature gets plus 5, plus 5, and gains trample uh, until the end of the turn. This card is perfectly fine. It's a 4-3 for 4. It's a little bit under par, but not terrible. Uh, and it is a mana sink late game. The danger here is that it dies pretty easily. Obviously with 3 toughness, it's a little bit less exciting. Uh, but having a mana sink like this late game where you can just pump stuff up is perfectly fine. Uh, not quite on par with the knight, I don't believe, uh, so I'm going to stick with that for now. Uh, Blood Throne Vampire, a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a black. Sacrifice a creature, and it gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. Uh, this is actually a great card. Uh, it's, it's a little bit like self-harming, I guess is the best way to put that. Obviously, you're sacrificing creatures, but it does give you a sack outlet, which some decks enjoy. Uh, it's a little under par at, on uh, two mana, but you obviously can pump this up whenever you need to. So I do like this card. Uh, again, not as much as the Cliffhaven. Uh, but, so Nest Invader is a great card. A 2-2 for one and a green. When it enters the battlefield, put a 0-1 Colorless Eldrazi spawn creature token onto the battlefield. It has sacrifice it and add one mana, uh, one generic mana to your mana pool. I love this card. Uh, a lot of the creatures in this set spit out little Eldrazi spawns. Uh, they're fantastic. Almost all of them are fantastic, I would say. Uh, this is a really prime uh, candidate for like first picking in terms of commons. Uh, obviously, there are much better cards at, at, com at uncommon excuse me, and rare, but uh, I really, really love this card. It ramps you. It's on curve already, uh, and so for that reason, I think that's so far going to be the pick. Uh, Demystify, an instant for one white, destroy target enchantment. Uh, basically a sideboard card only. Uh, there are instances where you might want to play this, but in general you're probably not going to. Uh, raid Bombardment, two and a red for an enchantment. Whenever a creature you control with power two or less attacks, Raid Bombardment deals one damage to the defending player. Uh, I don't really like cards like this. Uh, it's kind of silly in this set because if you spit out enough little zero one one tokens, you can just start swinging with them even just to deal the one damage. Uh, so it does kind of dig you out of a board stall position, 
But if you're already attacking with creatures that are power two or less, ideally you're probably winning already. Uh, and so in that instance, this is sort of a win more card or just digging you out of some really terrible situation. So I don't really like it. Uh, this card is pretty good. So Ulamog's Crusher is an 8-8 eight, eight for 8. Uh, it has Annihilator 2. Again, if you are not an older player, when this creature attacks, defending player sacrifices 2 permanents, uh, and it attacks every turn if able. This is great top in in literally any deck. Uh, because it's an 8-8 eight, eight for 8, but it's colorless, uh, you can get away with it in any deck. Obviously, the green deck with things like Nest Invaders have really the easiest time of playing it, but there are little spawn generators in almost all of the colors, uh, which is fantastic. So I'm going to keep that here for now because I really do like that card. <coughs> uh, Fleeting Distraction, one blue for an instant. Uh, target creature gets minus one, minus zero until the end of the turn, and you draw a card. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I don't really like this. Uh, it is instant speed, and it's only one mana. It does replace itself. It does a lot of cool things. It just doesn't really do enough. Uh, it gives something minus one, minus zero, which is not very impactful most of the time. Uh, so most of the time, this is just a cycling card. I imagine you play this uh, if you're very low on playables in blue, but other than that, not very exciting. <coughs> Uh, Stalwart Shield Bears, uh, one and a white for a 0-3 with Defender. Other creatures you control with Defender get plus 0, plus 2. Uh, I'm not sure. I feel like there was actually a Defender deck uh, in this uh, limited environment. I don't know how good it was, but I would imagine in that deck you'd probably want something like this. Uh, but I don't really like it. Other than that, it's pretty bad, I think. Uh, well, here's a good card. Wall of Omens is a 0-4 for one and a white. It does have Defender. Uh, and when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card, which is great. Uh, it blocks early game for two mana. A 0-4 is fairly difficult to deal with. You can Flame Slash it, but uh, it's going to block for days. Uh, and it replaces itself, which is pretty fantastic. I don't know exactly which of these three cards is necessarily the best, though, uh, if I'm going to be honest, but we'll see. Uh, Praise Vengeance. Uh, one green for an instant target creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn. It also has rebound, so if you cast it from your hand, exile it as it resolves. At the beginning of your next upkeep, you may you may cast this card from exile without paying its mana cost. So essentially you get two uh, rounds of being able to play this card the second time for free. This is an ideal combat trick. Uh, it's fantastic. You win a favorable combat, hopefully, uh, the turn you play it at instant speed. And then the next turn, you're able to pump up a creature at the beginning of your turn uh, and then hopefully swing in. So this is a really, really good uh, combat trick, but it is a combat trick, so I would wait on it. Uh, Brimstone Mage, two and a red for a 2-2 two -two creature, again featuring level up, so three and a red to level this guy up. If he's level one or two, uh, he becomes a 2-3 and you can tap him to deal one damage to target creature or player. Uh, if he becomes level 3 or higher, uh, he becomes a 2-4, and you can tap him to deal 3 damage to target creature or player. Uh, that's a good card. I kind of like that. I'm going to say that that's so far my pick. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but I don't know if that's technically correct. I feel like this is a very must-answer card, uh, and that's kind of why I really like this. But, again, that might be incorrect. <coughs> Uh, Hedron Matrix is our rare. So it's an artifact equipment for four. Equip creature gets plus X plus X, where X is its converted mana cost, and it has an equipment cost of four. I am not a huge fan of this card. Uh, I like it. I think it's good in basically any deck. Uh, it does turn pretty much any creature into a much bigger threat, which is great. Uh, and honestly, the more I'm talking about it, the more I kind of like it, uh, to be honest. We'll see. Okay, so we didn't get anything else. Um... I feel like this is good in every deck. This is a little bit more like focused in terms of not necessarily the decks that it goes in, obviously a red deck, but other than that, uh, it's just kind of good anywhere. But I feel like Hedron Matrix might actually be the pick. Uh, I might be wrong, but I think I'm gonna go Hedron Matrix. I think there are actually a lot of decent cards in this, uh, this specific pack. Uh, so I might be incorrect. Please let me know in the comment section below uh, what you guys think, but of course, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. Uh, if you really enjoyed it, please make sure to subscribe, stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.